Senator Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would expect when we do our budget, and I know we will under uh, Senator Enzi's uh, leadership, that you'll probably like our budget about as much as we like yours. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, there seems to be some common ground here. The idea that sequestration needs to be fixed, uh, I agree with you, Mr. Donovan. At the end of the uh, sequestration, as we have it today under the Budget Control Act, what percent of GDP will be spent on defense? Uh, I don't have that number in front of me. If you do, uh, well, it depends you can on tell who me, you talk to between 2.3 percent and 2.7 percent. In terms of historical averages since World War II, what have we been spending on defense? Uh, significantly higher than that. Yeah, so I think that's the, uh, do you agree that the threats in the world do not justify going to 2.7, 2.3%? Uh, we fully agree, and this budget makes clear that sequestration is a threat to our military readiness, and we ought to reverse it. Back to Senator Sessions' questions, you do spend more than the budget control cap. You say you spend for, uh, you, you account for it by offsetting and mandatory, I think. Uh, uh, Senator Portman may challenge that a bit, but there is a desire by some of us on the committee to replace sequestration, at least most of it, with a revenue component and a mandatory reform component. Uh, I just want to be in the camp of saying that I'm not going to support a budget that continues to gut the military. And it's just not the military, it's the CDC, the NIH, and a lot of other programs. So I support the idea you're trying to achieve. I just don't know if I agree with the methodology. Uh, about the workforce, how many retiree, how many workers do we have per retiree today in the workforce? Uh, is three. Okay. Okay. When I was born in 55, it was 16. <clears throat> Unless there's a baby boom among 60-year-olds, I think we're in trouble. In 20 years, it goes to two. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. That we're living longer and having fewer children. A lot of Western nations face this problem. Is that correct? Absolutely. Doesn't that cry out for rational immigration reform? Where do the new workers come from? I couldn't agree with you more, Senator. For so those who say on our side or any other side that we're glutted with workers, you're not looking at America the way it is. And you're obviously not running a business. Because if you're in the business world, you're having a hard time getting high-skilled workers, and if you're in the, uh, the manual labor world, you're hard in, having a hard time getting workers. So I just reject the idea that we don't need workers. We do. We just need to pick the workers. <laughs> we need a rational way of choosing an economic-based immigration system rather than just chaos. Uh, when we talk about America in the future and the challenges we face, probably the biggest challenge domestically is the retirement of the baby boom pop population. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. There's about 80 million of us, and uh, that's why you need immigration to replace us in the workforce. But uh, is it fairly accurate that by 2042, if nothing changes, uh, we'll be spending all the money we collect in taxes just to pay for the Medicare Social Security bill? Sounds about right. So just pause for a second. Unless something changes, all the money we're going to collect in taxes in the future, whether it's 17.5 or 19 point whatever, is going to go to pay for two government programs, Medicare and Social Security. There'll be no money left to invest in infrastructure. There'll be no money left to invest in the military unless you have massive borrowing. Do you agree with me that the challenge of our generation is to find a way to change that dynamic, to make Medicare and Social Security sustainable without taking all the revenue? I guess I would put a few caveats on that. Um, one, we need to do that in a way that keeps our promises to those who have paid into the system. I, I agree and, with that. We're not talking about divesting people. We're talking about long-term structural changes, means testing benefits, adjusting the age of retirement, but we also need revenue. So what I'm willing to do is work with you and other members of the committee to find a way to structurally adjust uh, these entitlement programs. In terms of revenue, if you took all the money the top 1% made, every penny of it, would it balance the budget? Uh, the answer is no. I don't think they, that it would. Okay, if, you took, if you took every penny out of the Defense Department, would it balance the budget? 
Uh, it would not. Okay, so you're not gonna tax your way into prosperity and you're not gonna cut your way into prosperity. You eventually have to reform entitlements to sustain an America that's not gonna become Greece. Does that make sense? It, it does, and in fact, our budget has $400 billion of savings in Medicare and Medicaid, and, and I couldn't agree with you more that immigration reform is uh, perhaps the single most important thing we can do to uh, improve the solvency of Social Security going forward. It saves close to a trillion dollars over 20 years uh, in terms of uh, reducing deficits.